you have to lay your life down in order to find true life. And laying down your life for the sake of somebody else is, I think, the essence of living. Knowing what poverty is aligned with my, uh, parallel to my understanding, it was just an experience. It's something uh, that's temporary. Um, people just don't know it all the time, right? Um, you aren't impoverished. Um, you're more than that. And people just need their eyes open to that so that they can see the horizon and have a goal to reach for. And I think that's what we do here at Upstream Impact. Upstream Impact is a intense uh, anti-poverty program that actually works with people mainly in generational poverty to move them to the middle class. And it's a community approach to solving poverty as opposed to a governmental or institutional approach. And I say it serves the community because it lets the community own its own issues. You know, we have become a society where we have outsourced our care to institutions and professional organizations rather than just loving my neighbor and taking responsibility for the good and the bad inside my community and making it better. We call the families in poverty leaders because they lead their own change. We call the mentors allies because we feel that's a better term to show this equal and reciprocal relationship. So we find that actually life change happens both in the leader and the ally. Um, I think one of the main things that I like to think of I do, I try to bring inspiration and hope um, for so people can overcome challenges not by themselves but with someone walking um, with them that cares. I would basically ask you, are you on track with your life? Or do you have these dreams and they're laid in the back of your mind? And do you have somebody who is coming alongside you, helping to prompt you, helping to research with you, helping you to become all that you imagined in those dreams? And uh, so that's a huge blessing to us. Uh, but we don't just throw them together and say good luck. We operate like a big family. So we have dinner every week together. We create a sense of family and love between one another and neighbors. We work in the same geographical area. We raise the support necessary to surround them with a staff that really can help support that relationship and make it uh, beneficial. We want to see them have accomplishments. We want to see them have futures, to have homes, to have lives. We're kind of like the family doctor. We don't own a specific need. We actually own the, the person. We latch on and we become committed to one another and then we help that individual navigate all the different resources in the communities. To me, that's amazing. You know, that's transformation. And so that makes me want to be more earnest about anyone that I connect with so that I can see the other end of their story. The reason we called it upstream impact is because we don't want to just pull bodies out of the river as they're floating down the stream. We want to go up and fix the bridge. Part of fixing the bridge is saying, let's not just help people in poverty, let's get them out. I think when you dive deep into the issue of poverty, you realize that it's, it's not something that's fixed overnight. So we really put it in three different stages. The first stage is survival mode. Those are people who are unemployed or chronically underemployed, who make 100% or less of the federal poverty guidelines. That's survival mode. To get out of survival mode, you really need what we call a placeholder job. Placeholder job is, you know, nine to 12 bucks an hour. It's probably something you don't wanna do the rest of your life, but it gives you some stability. You can now pay your rent, buy your food, and have decent clothes to wear. I am the Director of Employment at Upstream Impact. I help people refine their job seeking and interview skills. <laughs> For those that have been unemployed, helping them to build a resume and get that confidence to be able to go into a job interview. And I help people locate jobs in the community. I also reach out to employers to establish a pipeline of available employment for candidates that we have coming through our program. That middle stage then we call the stability phase, where people are actually stabilized around basic human needs but they're not doing what they want to do the rest of their life. So to move to a higher income bracket, we say then we move from placeholder job to a career path. And that usually takes an additional skill, sometimes provided through 
a certificate program or some kind of college program. And then that moves them, we say, from the stability mode. Then they, they go to what we call the sufficiency mode. And sufficiency is really your middle class income 200% or higher than the federal poverty guidelines. So we desire to walk with people through that entire process. And we think it'll take usually a minimum of three years and sometimes as high as five years, but I think with the support there, it can be done. Well, our goal in the next five years is to get 1,000 men, women, and children in Northeast Denver out of poverty. It's a unique work. I say that only because I don't know anyone who else is doing it. Taking responsibility for the whole person. Responsible for my family. I'm thinking about those lives that I can see where we can benefit them, show them that we're not just another, some program that's gonna take you in, get their numbers, okay, now we're gonna release you, you know, you've gotten a job, but we really wanna walk with them as friends, as part of our family. I am so rewarded by what I do. We all have poverty within us, um, and only by banding together with our friends and neighbors can we help eradicate that kind of poverty. When we ask people upon completion of the program what has been most impactful, what, what was the key lever for change? The allies will all say, well, they got an education, they got a good job. The leaders never say that. They always say, I have a friend. Uh, I have a family I can count on. I have uh, a support system that is completely new and it's strong and I've had to lean on them and they have held me up. So I think that is just so missing in our culture today because we become so individualized that I think that's, that strength of family is the intangible, that is the responsibility of the community to care for itself. There is no significant change in anyone's life without a significant relationship.